Werder Bremen. They won the Bundesliga in 2004. After that, in the next four years, they got third place, second place, again third place and again second place. 2007, where the Premier was in the EuroLeague semi-finals. 2009, they were actually in the EuroLeague final. Unfortunately, they lost in extra time against Shakhtar Donetsk. 2010, again, they got third place. 2011, their first bad year. 13th place, just 5 points in front of 16th place. 2013 again a very bad year, this time 14th place and just 3 points in front of 16th place. Last year, after 17 games, they just had 2 more points in last place, played horrible and many people believed this could be the year women gets relegated. But they had a quite good Second round, second half of the season, they survived. Still quite close, 9 points to 16th place, but they survived. The big question of course is, what was the reason Werder Bremen was such a well-known and such a well-performing team who almost bo uh, were able to beat Barcelona once in the Champions League? Ronaldinho equalized in uh, like one or two minutes before the final whistle. And after that, they beat every team in the Bundesliga by 4-5 goals, even big teams. What was the reason for that? And the main reason was, they had an amazing plan. Their plan was to buy young talents, promising players, and they trusted in them. They let them play, let them do mistakes. If they made a horrible mistake, no problem, you are young, you are allowed to make mistakes. And because of that, these young promising players were able to just improve very quickly on a very high level. And they became amazing players. Just a few examples for them. Because, yeah, that's also the reason or the way women made money. They saw the, the, these players. A few examples. Claudio Pizarro, a very well known guy. They bought him for 1.5 million pounds, two years later sold them to Bayern for 8.2 million pounds. Thorsten Frings, Frank Rost, went to Dortmund Schalke for a total 50 million pounds. They were really young when they joined Bremen, so for almost no money at all. Ismail went also to Bayern to 8.5 million pounds, also a very well known guy. Miroslav Klose, everybody knows that him. World Cup top scorer of all time. He joined, he joined Bremen for 5 million pounds. Two years later, joined Bayern for 50 million pounds. And for other very well known guys are Per Mertesacker, Socrates, Mesut Özil, and of course Diego. They all joined Bremen in total for 19.2. And one, two or three years after they joined Bremen, they left them. And again, they joined them in total for 19.2 and left Bremen for in total 66.2 million pounds. So just as of these four players, they made a profit of, let me think, 47 million pounds. Yeah, they made money, still had amazing players. Many wanted to join them, especially all talents wanted to join Bremen because they know Bremen is amazing in yeah, creating world stars out of promising players. What happened? In 2013, Thomas Schaaf left Bremen. He was their coach for 14 years. And after that, they both made a few mistakes. They made wrong transfers. They also wanted to buy players now, older players as well, because, yeah, of course you can understand that they were a bit upset that always when they had amazing players, they, oh, they always joined Bayern and that's why Bayern won the league and they didn't. So they stopped doing that a bit. And then start with one coaches. And one coaches, one transfers, so a bad team and a coach who cannot train that team doesn't work out at all. 
They were not able to qualify for Champions League or Euroleague places anymore in the last few years. And yeah, now they have big financial problems as well. If you look at this, you can see for many years they made uh, a profit. 5.8 million, 3 million, 8.3, 2.4, 6.2. They always made a lot of money. But you also have to remember with the Champions League you get 10, 15 million just if you're in the group stage. Just if you're not even able to get in the round of 16. You still get 10, 12, 14, 15 million. So just to, they just made around 5, 3, 8 million. Hmm. 2011-12. We were not able to get into the Champions League or Euro League because one year before that, as I just told you, they get 13th place. And that year they made a loss of 13.9. Next year a loss of 7.9 million and then a 9.8. Also in the last two years, last year they made 10.1 million pounds, a loss of 10 million, uh, 10.1 million pounds. This year 5.9 million pounds. Many experts and also people who work for Bremen say they need to get in the Euroleague or Champions League, otherwise they can't survive like that for 3, 4, 5 more years. In the next 2, 3 years they have to get into the Euroleague or Champions League, otherwise uh, that wouldn't work out. And everybody says if they get relegated they have to start from completely new. They can even survive with the money they get through, through the Bundesliga, even, even though it's getting more and more. If they uh, get relegated into the second league, yeah, they have to start completely new. And they definitely have to sell everybody who is at least quite decent in their team. They have to get a new coach and probably the board has to change as well. This year, it definitely could happen, guys. Right now, if you look at the table, it is alright. In the last, just to tell you, in the last few days I took time and I recreated this situation. So every result Bremen had in this season, in career mode, was the same result they had in real life. Of course I cannot recreate, uh, recreate really the full situation. Best example, Halabi Sibalin is fighting for uh, third place right now, they are I think third or fourth place and just, yeah I think they are fourth place just one point behind third place, but here they are last place. Other teams um, are down here, Hannover is actually almost relegated and other teams are down here, Stuttgart for example and this Kajemot Stuttgart is third place. So sorry guys I cannot create everything, right now Bremen it's very close and here if Hannover loses it's 7 points to 16th place so yeah but still we can get relegated if Hannover wins just 4 points to 16th place. And because of that they decided one last time to install a new, new coach. His positive thinking, his, his energy is maybe the last hope for World Agreement to not only get not get relegated and survive, but also to get strong again. And that's why I'm here, as the title already says, make World Agreement great again. Of course, the title has something to do with um, Donald Trump, who said make America great again. But yeah, guys, that is the challenge. First of all, we have four more games. The first one, of course, the big derby against Hamburg. Nobody wants Bremen to get relegated, not even Hamburg fans. Because, you know, yeah, they don't, they don't like Bremen. Everybody needs that derby. This North derby, people need it. And so, we also have the game against Stuttgart. Normally, a big fight against relegation. And this key mode is uh, a game against third place. Köln and Frankfurt. So, in real life, we have Hamburg. Stuttgart, Köln and Frankfurt, everybody is fighting against relegation. Here Köln is safe and fighting for Euroleague places. Um, also Stuttgart is fighting for second, uh, third place at least. 
Frankfurt is quite safe as well. It's just Hamburg. And in the second, third, maybe fourth season, I want to make them great again by the same plan they always had. I just want to do what they did when they were successful. I will buy young talents and I will let them become amazing players. Not only German talents, no, just talents and I will let them become amazing players. If I have to sell them, maybe I will do that, but yeah. Big goal, I want to win the league again. 2004 they won the league, then four years straight, they are really close. This. Now I'm here and I want to do it again and second of all I would like to win the Euroleague or Champions League because Bremen was really close two three times especially 2009 when they were in the finals lost against Schachter in extra time. I want to do it. I want to win the Euroleague or Champions League as well. My big goal is win the Bundesliga. So guys, that's it for the introduction. If you like that, if you like these kind of intros, then please smash the like button. In this episode, I will go through the four games. I will just be, yeah, finish this season and starting tomorrow with episode two, we will start creating a huge squad again. Um, last but not least, last information I have to give you. I have, of course, two series, uh, of course, Wednesday on Wednesday. FC Wimbledon and Bremen. I'm not the guy who makes changes every day. So Monday Bremen, Tuesday Wimbledon, uh, Thursday Bremen, Friday Wimbledon. No, I can't do that. Every time I record, I record two episodes of the same series. So it will probably be like now Monday, Tuesday Bremen, Thursday, Friday it's um, Wimbledon on the weekend Bremen. Then next week Monday, Tuesday Wimbledon. First the Friday Bremen and weekend at Wimbledon. It's probably going to be like that. But now this is my team. And I want to talk about it real quick as well. We have Wheatwald who is quite young, who is a decent goalkeeper, but I am if I have the money to I will probably replace him. We have Garcia who is 27. Has some decent stats, not the quickest. Good in defending, so okay. Westergaard is a very well known guy, 23, very good, many English teams want him, um, he is for me like Per Medesaga, 94 strength, amazing heading, good defending, very very tall but fucking slow, so I will see if I can use him. Gilbochi of course our best center back because he has some decent speed as well, amazing defending and is tall, but he is just alone from Sch uh, Chelsea so he is probably going back again. Kevin Salasi, I really like him in real life, he is quite decent, um, but he's 29, so yeah, I want uh, talents. Center mid position, our biggest problem, we have you know which who is amazing, who is just 28, okay, it's older than I thought to, but he has some good speed, 94 stamina, good balance and agility, that crossing, that curve, that free kicks, that ball control tripling, good passing, all right defending, high, high work rates, versatile, so I, he is amazing. But other than him, we have problems. We have Parkfrede, who is alright at least. We have Fritz, who is quite old, and yeah, so he will probably leave us in a few seasons. Uh, seasons. We also have this Yatabare guy, who is um, also 27, so he's just back up right now. I will probably sell him. Krilic, uh, he's young. Maybe if I train him. Some other talents, yield him. But not nothing really amazing in my opinion, to be fair. Um, in this winger position, I love Bartels, Finn Bartels, because he has some decent speed, good strength, good dribbling. I like him, even though it's, it doesn't seem at the mason, just 74 weighted, just 78 broken from dribbling, 70 finishing. To, it, it's, it is easy to play with him. I don't know why. It's Tunali is alright. Good speed. Good dribbling, I definitely have to train him a lot. And last but not least, Uja, who is decent, I like him because he has decent speed, 90 feet jumping, 9, uh, 83 strength, good heading and he's tall. Ah, he's not that tall to be fair, but I really like to use him. Um, we also have Claudio Pizarro, but he's probably going to leave us in this season, but that's shit. I mean, I would have just used him as a backup, but I would like to play with him. Kleinheisler is quite good actually for a 22 year old guy, it's all right. It's not the best team, Sternberg is a talent they have, but yeah, 
Alves. So it's not amazing that team. Definitely not amazing. So I'm going to change a lot. I'm probably just going to leave. Uh, keep Westergaard, maybe Wiedwald, uh, definitely Junosovic, maybe Garcia, Bartels of course, Itsunali, Ucha, uh, yeah, that's probably it. <sighs> but that's it for all that. Our first game, or my first game, is the coach. We need a win, because we're still not... It's still, we, we can still get relegated, just 4 games to go, we can still get relegated. A win today, though I say we are through. Oh. It's just an amazing duration. My first game as the coach of Herder Bremen, of course we play in Hamburg for the Nerf de Derby. Just amazing. Let's go. Ooh, big mistake. Bartels, Bartels for Uja, Uja and Ötztunali, yes! The former HSV player scores against them. It's Tunali. Big mistake there from I think I I don't know his name to be fair. And then a perfect finish. Boom! Yes, first goal. It's Tunali. Oh oh. Alright. And it just had to help. I mean <laughs> it's Tunali. The former HSV player. I mean his, I think, father or grandfather is one of the Haas for legends and he is playing for Bremen, scored and now who is going against us? Of course Aaron Hunt, who played so many years for Bremen, then joined uh, Wolfsburg, Many nobody really understood that because he was a legend at Bremen and then he decided to join Hamburg and now he's, yeah, let's say uh, Almost everybody in Germany hates him a bit because of that. And of course he scored, so... Yeah, great story. <laughs> Fritz, Fritz, and this has to be, yes, goal! A number one, I think, a number one, what the fuck? No, it's actually not you know which I don't know who it was. An amazing mistake here, then... Who is it? Or oh, we are quite lucky, to be fair. Who is it? Is it Ertunali again? No, it's Finn Bartels. I don't know why, but I love him in real life and in FIFA. I just like to use him. He reminds me of Compton, Leroy Sané, he is that type of player. Very high agility, very fast, at least he is not that fast to be fair, but he feels like he had... Oh my god. Uh, almost Aaron Hunt again. He feels like he had like a 90 spin speed and not an 85. But yeah, 2 1 now. Of course, they are going really attacking, and this is the chance to make it game over. It's to Nali again. Two goals against his former team. One from Aaron Hunt, so still it's just crazy. I'm going to make just a few substitutions. Jata Paris on for Bagfrede. Also, I will bring on Klein Heisler for Ötz to Nali. I'm going to play like that, uh, no that's it. Uh oh, they are full again, a shot, 3-2, 5 shots in the whole game and 5 goals. It is Goiko Katscha, so uh, yeah, let's just not concede another one, I'm already ultra defensive. Uh oh, no, 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 not like this, oh my god, oh guys. But this is La Prima in real life as well. They have a good attack, they can score many goals, but their defense is horrible. And there it is, guys, we did it. First game, first win, three points. Wow, yes. Oh, it's Sonali, man of the match for me. So guys, before this one, I never trained any of the players again, because I wanted to have them like all, at least almost the same over they have in real life. But now, of course, I feel like I'm allowed to train players. I don't have many good talents. I have many good players who are already like 27, 28, who wouldn't improve that fast. And the young players, are, most of them are like 61, 62 weighted. So my biggest talent, uh, biggest talent is Ötztunali, 20 years old, 74. We just saw what he can do. And therefore I decided I will train him in the next few weeks. At least until the start of the first uh, of the second season, 
where I will get other talents in as well. Now the second game in real life it would be an amazing game against relegation a very exciting game here it is a game for uh, yeah, 13th place who cannot do anything right now anymore I mean we are already not almost not relegated Hannover lost so right now it's I think 10 points or no 7, seven points I think 7 points 9 game uh, 9 points to get so it should be over Stuttgart though is fighting for third place I changed one thing, Yadapari is playing for Fritz who is down on NG and I really didn't like him in the first game. Let's go. Oh, Wiedwald, nope, not this time unfortunately. Uh, our defense is so shit. I mean we played against Hamburg who aren't even strong and we were quite lucky that we just considered two. And now we are playing against an amazing defense, look at this, just if you pass it it's too easy and Ginchek. Shit. So I'm definitely, I definitely have to change my defense and then start off the next season straight away in the transfer window. Have to buy three, four defenders. Another chance for this time, Ucha. Yes, Anthony Ucha. If he has a chance, he's going to score. Even though he is, to be fair, not even close to Daniel so which he reminds me of him because he's the same type of player. He seems like he's not on the pitch at all. But if he has a chance, it's a goal. And that's it. It is an amazing tour at home against Stuttgart. I'm really happy about that. Another point. Come on, we have just blow the whistle. Yes. Boom, we did it. Another tour. Well, my first tour, to be fair. Another tour is not right. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Even if Hannover and or Ingolstadt would win, it's the seven points, six points to go. We saved them. Now our goal is to get as high in the table as possible. And this is just, we can just try to get 12th place, same amount of points in Mainz and Hamburg, but we have quite a bad goal difference. Um, yeah, but come on, I want to get at least 13th place, but 12th place would be nice. And in front of Hamburg as well, would be really good. Reedbolt wants higher wages and uh, Johansson is back from injury, he injured himself at in some point in this season. Just have a look at him, he is actually not bad, I, don't, I think we bought him. 75 graded, good speed, good finishing, alright technical stats, 25. I've, he is actually not bad, yeah injury bone, he injured himself again there. But uh, yeah, I think he is at least a good backup. If you not find a good striker, young striker, I will just use Uja and Johansson as backup. Now let's go to Wiedwald real quick, he is on, I already, as you can see, um, had to, not only these two, had to offer like 4 or 5 players new contracts. Wiedwald wants 10 for us more, that's not a problem, let's give him important first team player. Bizarro, yeah, his contract expiring, I think he is going to retire unfortunately, a legend is going to retire. Maybe we can find this region, I will look, at, uh, look for him, yeah, 10 points. Köln our next opponent. Barkfried, a good pass, Uja, boom! Uja is going against his former team as well. Good pass from Barkfried and then, as I always say, uh, said already, if he has a chance, it's a goal. Anthony Uja. Oh, Bittencourt, yeah. First good chance and as I told you, our defense is shit. It is really shit. Look at that, nobody is near him and then, yeah, okay and he is through, nobody is defending him at all and he is maybe the best attacker they have. One all, just before half time, Modest could be through, ah, Chilaboji, I really like him but he's definitely going to be too expensive, I would buy him, uh, but we, ah, okay, but he don't have the money. Alright, the first shot is unlucky for both teams. I mean, it's unlucky for them that it's not going in, because it was an amazing hit from Risse, but look at this, it's perfectly, really perfectly on the feet of Gerhard, who just has to tap it in. Mm -hmm. So, Köln is now winning with a huge mistake. So, first three games, a won, a loss. Uh, a win, a loss and a draw, so 4 points. 
So on average start for Bremen, I think it's uh, right. Hamburg is getting a draw and I don't remember the other team. It is um, Mainz who always uh, also got a draw. Yes, some good news. Pizarro is not retiring, he is going to have another season even though he is 37 years old and Vitwald accepted the contact offer. Now I will go to Pizarro and I will offer real legend even, even if I won't use him that often. It means you just have to keep him 10,000 pounds for him um, and yeah we have a last game. We are playing against Frankfurt who are... So Bison in 8th place and still have a chance to get in the Euro League. Um, yeah, we just can try to get 12th or 13th place. I want to at least get in front of one of them. At least 13th place. Therefore we have probably to Yeah, we have to win. Even if it were, we have, we have no chance. So we have to win this game at home against Frankfurt. And have to hope that Hamburg or... Um, Oh, you already at uh, Mainz, yes, Mainz are uh, losing. Well, I didn't expect that. Seferovic with an amazing goal. I mean, wow. Yeah, guys, so now I, I lost all hope. Just a few minutes to go, we didn't have one good chance, look at that, one good chance in the whole game and now I, I have to score two goals in seven minutes after we had no chance in 84. They are just playing so shit and still, yeah, just even worse. Well, after a win, we got a draw, two losses, one shot. Zero on target. Nice, it's nearly 75 now. So guys, um, I will stop recording now, Pizarro accept the contact offer, I will go to Sofifa, I will uh, put a few players first of all on my shortlist, then I will go on Sofifa, we're looking for a few talents. Um, talents, most people don't know, look at this, he's going that fast. Um, you also have the chance in the comments Probably because I don't think I will uh, go through the whole transfer window in one episode to tell me uh, players you know who are not that well known, maybe who have a nice potential and not that expensive because I will probably get like 6-7 million pounds. It's nearly going up again, 76, maybe even a bad idea to train him because that way he's getting better and therefore more expensive. But yeah, I have not be, not, uh, nobody else to really train. I will try to get him, we'll see if I can do that. And yeah, look at the table, we can see Bayern of course won the league, 92 points, didn't lose one game, undefeated. Schalke second, then Dortmund, Stuttgart, Köln is actually 5th place. And yeah, uh, Gladbach was quite surprising in a bad way. Um, Berlin is in the playoffs, Ingolstadt and Hannover are going down. Uh, yes! Yes, no, okay, they are not sure yet. Hey, come on, you can't, for I, I, I think they didn't fire me, but because otherwise I would have got the news already. So, I did it. I staffed Graham and and they are not going to fire me, so I'm very happy. Guys, tomorrow the second episode, tell me who to buy in the comments. Have an amazing day and bye guys.